Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the last video, we have studied about what is the sum of two projections. Is it also a projection and under what conditions it is a projection. Now let's move on to its proof. So here we wanted to prove this theorem, right? So in the first part, we uh, this is an if and only if part. So we have to prove it two ways. So first of all, consider that the sum is given to be a projection. So that means it is both self adjoint and it is idempotent as well, right? And so in this case, we wanted to prove that the spaces y1 and y2, they are orthogonal to each other. So this is what we wanted to prove in this case. Now, because P is a projection, so that means it is idempotent. What does that mean? It means that you have P is equal to P square. And what is P? P is your P1 plus P2. So you have P1 plus P2 is equal to P1 plus P2 square. So you could open up the square. You have this thing here. Now because both P1 and P2, both P1 and P2, they are projections. This is known to us. Now if they are projections, so that means they are idempotent. So that means P1 square is equal to P one and p2 square is equal to p2 being idempotent being projections right so using this fact here we could write this p1 this p1 as p1 p1 square as p1 p2 square as p2 and the uh, this p1 and p1 they, it, they cancel out each other's effect this P2 and P2 cancels out each other's effect. So we are left with the zero operator on the left hand side and the right hand side P1, P2 plus P2, P1. Now here we could do some little manipulations. So we could multiply on the left hand side by the operator P2. So you have P2 multiplied with the zero operator that is the zero operator. P2 multiplied with P1, P2 that is P2, P1, P2. P2 multiplied with P2, P1 that is P2 square P1, right? Now, because P2 square is again equal to P2 being idempotent, so we could write here P2 P1 instead of P2 square P1. Correct? Okay. So mark, let's mark this as equation number one. Now we could multiply this equation with P2 from the right hand side. So what do we have here? Let's see. When you multiply zero with P2 from the right hand side, it is again zero. When you multiply P2, P1, P2 with P2 from the right, it is P2, P1, P2 square. And when you multiply P2, P1 with P2 from the right, so that is P2, P1 and P2. Now you could again write P2 square as equal to P2 because P being a projection is an idempotent operator, right? So you have P2, P1, P2, P2, P1, P2, that is two times of P2, P1, P2, that implies P2, P1, P2 is zero. So that gives us P2, P1, P2 as the zero operator. So let's use this thing here in equation one. Now this thing is a zero operator. So that gives us P2, P1 as the zero operator. So that is what we have this P2, P1 as the zero operator. So if this is a zero operator, so using the part two of the following result, this result we have studied, if the two projections that turns out to be the zero operator, then the corresponding closed subspaces Y and V, they are orthogonal to each other, right? If P2 and P1, they are zero, that means the corresponding closed subspaces Y1 and Y2, in this particular case, by, uh, they are Y1 and Y2. So both, both of them, they are orthogonal to each other. So this proves one way of our part one, right? So we assume that the sum that is a projection and we have proved that the two spaces y1 and y2 they are orthogonal to each other right next conversely we assume that the two spaces they are orthogonal to each other right and we wanted to prove that this p being the sum that is a projection operator so here because this y1 and y2 they are orthogonal to each other we can again use this result here so using this result, we have both P1, P2 is equal to zero. And we could also reverse the order here. P2, P1 is also equal to the zero operator here, right? So 
using this thing we wanted to prove that this is a projection so again we'll go by proving that this is both self adjoint one thing and idempotent another thing right so here let's see if we have both p1 p2 and p2 p1 as zero let's see what do we have we'll go by the reverse steps so we'll add both of them that is also a zero operator so we could add p1 on on to the both uh, on to the left and right side p2 over to the left and right side right no issue in that and moreover because p1 and p2 they are idempotent therefore p this p1 could be replaced by p1 square and this p2 could be replaced by this p2 square we are just reversing the steps that we have done in the uh, uh, first uh, in the above proof right so now clubbing all these terms that is p1 p2 whole square so you have p1 p2 whole square is equal to p1 p2 so that means you have p square is equal to p where what was your p that was p1 plus p2 so in this case you have obtained that your operator p that is an idempotent operator so you have proved one part for the given result now we wanted to prove that this p1 and this p2 they are self adjoint to each other now you already know being uh, you wanted to show that the sum is self adjoint so you already know being projections they it themselves are self adjoint so if they are self adjoint when you add them that is also a self adjoint operator this is according to the property for the self adjoint bounded operators so now in this case the sum operator p1 plus p2 that is both self adjoint as well as idempotent if that is so so you can call the sum to be the projection operator so this proves first part now let's move on to the second part for this particular theorem here in the second part it uh, they states that whenever p is a projection that is p1 plus p2 that is a projection it would project whole of the given hilbert space onto the direct sum of y1 and y2 right let's move forward and see its proof for the proof here we assume that this p1 plus p2 that is a projection and we prove that it would project y on to the direct sum here so for that what do we do we wanted to prove this equality here so we prove it through this two parts firstly we'll prove y is contained in the direct sum of y1 and y2 and nextly we'll prove that this y1 plus y2 the direct sum is contained in y if both these things happen simultaneously we have this equality here right for that what do we do we firstly determine the closed uh, subspace y on to which p projects so what is p p is basically the sum p1 plus p2 right so for every element x which is taken from the given hilbert space so you could write y as p of x no issue what is your p p is your p1 plus p2 so you could open this up you have p1x plus p2x right now p1x is a member of y1 why because p1 projects all the elements of h onto y1 and p2 is a, a projection which projects all the elements of the given hilbert space onto y2 so that means p2x where x what was this x it was the some element taken from the given hilbert space that would project all the elements onto y2 so that means you are able to write this y in terms of the uh, pro, uh, sum of two things one is taken from y1 another one is taken from y2 and this is unique why because uh, why because there is one such element which is present in y1 and there is one element which is present in y2 so therefore you could write this y as some member of y1 plus uh, direct sum with y2 so you started by taking y from this capital y right and you have reached at the direct sum so that means this y is contained in the direct sum of y1 with y2 next we wanted to prove that y in the opposite thing right so y the direct sum is contained in y for that we take some element here and we prove that that a particular element is also a member of this space y 
So we consider that element to be V. We take it from the direct sum where this element is arbitrary and we prove that it is also a member of Y. Now because this element is, uh, is present in the direct sum, so we could write this as the sum of two entries, one is taken from Y1, another one is taken from Y2. Right now we could apply the projection P onto this thing V is equal to Y1 plus Y2. So let's see what do we have here. So we have PV. What is your V? V is your Y1 plus Y2. What is your P? P is your P1 plus P2. So you could open this thing. So you have P1 of Y1, Y2 and P2 of Y1, Y2. Again you could open up. So you have P1, Y1 plus P1, Y2 plus P2, Y1 plus P2, Y2. Simple multiplication. Right. So you have this thing and this thing as equal to zero because P1 would uh, because these two spaces, they are orthogonal to each other, Y1 and Y2 that is given to us in the assumption. So whenever you apply the projection onto Y2, P1 projection onto Y2 or P2 projection onto Y1, that will give you exactly zero. So uh, these things are zero. So you are left with P1, Y1 and P2, Y2 here now because P1 being a projection from H to Y1. If you take this projection restricted over Y1, so it would act as identity on all the elements of Y1. So you have P1, Y1 as equal to Y1 and P2, Y2 as equal to Y2. Why? Because both of them, they would act as identity taken on the elements of Y1 and Y2 respectively. And what was your Y1 plus Y2? That was again V. So that means you started from PV, reached at V. So you have PV is equal to V in this case, where V was some member from Y. So that means if this is there, so that means this particular V would be a member for, from the space Y, right? According to the definition for the projection operator. So initially you started by taking this element from the direct, from the direct sum this thing and now you have reached at a point where uh, this v belongs to y so that means this direct sum is contained in y so clubbing these terms together this one and this one so finally you have this equality and this is what we wanted to prove here so i hope you understood this proof well well that is it for this video thank you for watching